What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. This is the 270 LT awning from Overland Vehicle Systems that I installed a few days ago. And it's really great. The install was pretty simple and I love most of it. Stick around, find out why. All right, so this is everything that is delivered with the 270 awning. We got a box of what I'm guessing is hardware and other items and then the actual awning itself inside the big box. So we'll bust this open and start the process of mounting it on the truck. And before I get too far into the installation process, uh, I want to explain why I went with an OVS 270 awning. Because those of you that have been following the channel know that I love Yakima products. I have had several videos regarding all the different Yakima components that I have and the, the way that I've mounted them, the way that I've changed them, my impressions, all that kind of stuff. And I have been talking about the Yakima Major Shady 270 awning that was recently released, maybe two months ago. So why didn't I go with the Yakima 270? The Yakima awning is pushing $1,000. And the OVS awning is not only several hundred dollars cheaper than that, but also there was a really big spring sales event that they were doing. So I figured I'd give it a shot. But also, on top of that, I was scrolling around on the OVS website and uh, looking at different installation files. They're, they're PDFs that they have. And I looked at the instructions for this OVS awning and noticed that there is an entire section for mounting this to bed racks that are like Yakima Overhaul HD. I think it literally says Overhaul HD style bed racks, or maybe it's Yakima style bed racks. It's one of those two. I'm gonna see if I can put it up on the screen right now, but I found that to be very interesting because the, uh, the Yakima Overhaul HD bed rack is kind of like a unique bed rack. It's not necessarily like one of those traditional um, overland style bed racks with you know the molly panels and the uh, the different like extrusion components and all that kind of stuff it, it has a little bit more uniqueness to it I guess you could say so I was very surprised when I saw that OVS in their instructions literally says Yakima style bed rack I was like oh sweet okay I don't even have to guess with this so combine those two things together I decided to go with the OVS 270 and then also uh, I was poking fun at my friend uh, uh, Jeremy, AT4 Overland Bound, the last time that we went out to the woods to do a film for, for his truck. And uh, I was poking fun at all of his OVS gear. And, you know, I got a good look at it and realized like, yeah, this is some pretty good stuff. So anyway, I'm going to give them a shot. Wanted to explain really quick why I went with the OVS. Anyway, let's get this thing unpacked and mounted. All right, so there we go. Long box is unpacked. Not a whole lot in here other than the awning itself and then the extra poles, support poles that come separately. So the awning, because I already looked at the instructions, I know that the awning has two legs or two poles already attached to it. And then the extra ones are inside this little sleeve. And then the smaller box has all of our hardware and extra components. We've got our L brackets, some pretty heavy duty L brackets too. These are heavy. Um, we've got the strap that you use to kind of like tie off the end of the awning to the rack or to the truck once it's fully extended. And these look like they slide into the T-slots so that you can mount it. And then this one looks like this could be Velcro of some kind. I'm not sure where this goes to, but I'm going to take another look at the instructions and start figuring this out. So my big question right now is when I mount this to the side of the HD bar, because the way, the way that the L bracket is shaped, it's not like a complete L. You can see it has a little bit of a, a piece that sticks up. So the way that I'm going to mount it might be like that, or I could do it in the reverse. 
I'm not sure if I'll do it that way or if I'm gonna do it that way. I guess I have to do it the other way because of this lip. See how that bends in like that? So the way that that fits, I guess I could do it that way. I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit, but basically what I need to figure out is when the tent opens, because that's the, that's the ladder side on the passenger side. So when the tent opens like this, is the side of the shell gonna come and make contact with the L bracket when it's sitting right there. So I couldn't mount any of this stuff. I couldn't take the awning out until I had the tent back on the truck. And I was only recently able to get the, the tent back on the truck. It's a whole process. Um, honestly, I, I feel like I need to make a video about it, but we have a hill on the side of our house. I need to back up the truck to the hill. My wife and I have to muscle it up on top of it so that we have you know the extra height because we're standing on the hill. It's a whole thing, right? It's a 160 pound tent. But anyway, I've had the awning in the garage um, for like almost three weeks at this point, but I, I haven't been able to mount it until the tent's actually on because I need to experiment with the position of the tent. Like I just said, I want to know if it's going to make contact with those L brackets. And if it does, that's all right. I'll just loosen the tent and slide it slightly closer to the passenger side. I also need to know where the tent ends in relation to the back of the vehicle so that when the awning is opened all the way around it stops here instead of you know maybe here right I want it to actually make contact or almost make contact with the back of the tent so it you know there aren't any like open spaces or whatever so anyway I'm gonna off camera I'm gonna experiment with this a little bit and then uh, hopefully be able to come up with something that works all right so I've got the tent open well, I've got it half open anyway. I don't need to actually extend the second half of it out to the side with the ladder. I just need the shell to be open so I can see how close it gets to the side of these HD bars. And this looks like it clears. There's a space there. And I've got space up here, not touching. And honestly, right now it's butted right up against it. And if I flip it around to the other side, I can't go any further than this. It's got that little, that little lip right here. So I couldn't go further than that anyway. And it still clears underneath. And it still clears up top, but boy, is it close like that. It does stick out further with this profile and this orientation than it would if I flipped it the other way. I can butt it right up against it. So I feel like I might try to go with this just so that it's more, the awning is more like flush up against the uh, Yakima bars here. Who knows? I might actually get it on and then be like, oh, I don't really like the way that looks. It does hang a little lower that way. So I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. I do have to also get to my max tracks right here. So the awning could be hanging a little low. Let's see. All right, so for future reference, anyone watching this video considering getting an Overland Vehicle Systems awning. At first glance, I saw these and assumed, okay, I know exactly what these do. These will slide into the T-channel right here once I pop this thing out. Then I go to do it and they're too big. So I thought, all right, I must be missing something. So I download the PDF again and look at those instructions and it talks about the 5 8 bolts that come with your package. And I'm looking through this and this bag, which contain this and this and the L brackets. And honestly, I, I was looking through everything and I'm like, okay, no bolts. So then I start to get concerned. I start to we wonder whether I have extra bolts myself that I can use. And here they are. So for future reference, check the canvas bag that has the guy lines. 
all these bolts were buried at the bottom of the bag. So yeah, they're packed securely, but I had no idea that they were there. Mini freak out. Now, back to it. So this is gonna fit in here like so, okay? But what you might notice is when I put it in, first of all, it's tall, but second of all is it spins. And I have heard um, from things that I've seen online or read online is people that have overhaul HDs, the bolts that come with the OVS may or may not spin. And they're still usable. What you gotta do, what I've seen is people will fish them in the top and then they'll use like a flathead screwdriver and just push the screwdriver, tip of the screwdriver in to hold the bolt in place so it doesn't spin as you tighten it. I'm tinkering around and I'm looking at this thing going, huh, if it's not meant for the awning, well then what is it meant for? And I realized it is the perfect size for the Yakima Overhaul HD bed rack and the length of the bolt itself is not too long to fit underneath the tent. So I did a little happy dance and determined how this is gonna work. And just like that, we have the L bracket fixed into position the way that I want it, longer side up so that it's gonna clear over the cab and the back door. And I have loosened these top bolts just enough so that beneath I can still slide it in when I go to actually install the awning. Because I need to keep in mind that I don't wanna tighten these down so much that they can't be moved because it's a heck of a lot easier getting the L brackets on the back of the awning and then installing it and sliding it into, into place versus the other way around. I don't wanna try to hold this awning up there. In fact, I don't think I'd be able to. Um, I believe it's a 50 pound awning, which you know isn't crazy heavy. However, it is long and awkward, so it'd be hard for me to maneuver it. Um, and once I get it up and tighten it into position, I also then need to be able to tighten the backside of the L brackets on this part so that I can shift the awning left and right and figure out where the back is so that I can open it and have it meet here. So there are a lot of moving parts. And uh, one more thing with the Yakima bars, once I pulled this thing off, there's just a little screw beneath it that you loosen to yank it off. Um, you gotta remove this rubber strip and you just pull away as much as you need and then you cut it so you can see how I cut this one on my back crossbar. So I gotta do the same thing here. I'm just eyeballing it to be honest. Um, I'm just gonna pull away a little bit and then take the scissors to it. But I've already got this L bracket all set. So once it's in position, it'll slide into place just like the other. All right, so next task. Remove the little rubber stoppers, these ones here, and take your bolt that comes with the OVS awning, fish it in, all right? And it is just big enough not to turn, okay? And then fish it through all the way down. I'm gonna put the other one in this one and just slide it all the way to the side, and then I'll do the two in the top get it into position, grab the L bracket and set them up, keep the bolts loose so that it can shift back and forth and hopefully with some luck mount it up there all by myself. And boom, just like that, it's on. Literally just carried it up the ladder, rested it on my knee and then uh, fished those T slots that I left slightly loose into each bar and pushed it in. It's not, it's not actually like tightened or anything. I can move it. It's literally just the uh, 
the tilt that it wants to, holding it into position. So I'm looking at it right now, playing with, uh, playing with how far it's sticking out, the way it looks. Not 100% sold on it like this. I might need to take it down and flip the brackets around a little bit. The profile sticks out just a little bit. I'm gonna think on it for a minute. All right, and then a quick 10 minutes later, I ended up flipping the L brackets upside down. So I put it up in the highest setting it can be. Let's see if I can get a better image here. I use the uh, the higher of the two holes, but I still flipped it upside down so that I could get it nice and flush right up against the edge of the uh, the crossbars, and I think that looks a lot better. And even though I am using the higher of those of those two holes for the L bracket, with it being flipped upside down, it does sit slightly lower. I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. So there's the door test. Still plenty of space. So I'm feeling pretty good, I think. It's not like 100% flush with the tent, but it is 100% flush with the Yakima rack. It's as close as it's gonna get. So now I get to play with the distance, left or right, so I can see how it matches up once it's all the way open, matches up with the back of the tent. I also still need to pop the tent to see what happens here. So maybe I'll do that right now. All right, and now with the tent open, you can see the light getting through. So it's not making contact. Feeling pretty good. Very close, which is just the way I wanted it. Very close so that when the awning is deployed and the tent is open, I didn't want like a bunch of gaps, you know, in between all the components for a little bit of rain to come through or whatever. So I am liking that. All right, so L brackets are tightened down onto the Yakima HD bars. Got these ones tightened, the front ones, and then also the ones in the back are tightened down as well. Kind of a kind of a pain to get to those, but luckily the bed of the truck is empty, so I just put my tonneau cover back and crawled in and was able to fish my fingers up there with the uh, the wrench. So it's in position, and now I just need to move it left or right to figure out where it's going to be positioned on the back of the uh, tent. So as you could see, I'm in the process of opening the awning and I'm just wondering, and feel free to comment down below if you have experience with this as well, but I'm just wondering why when I pull the awning, this is about as far as I get. I was under the impression that it was going to come flush and flat right up against the tent it's just not it's not like a full 90 degrees you know what I mean something's preventing it from moving further and I'm guessing it's just the construction of it it won't go any further than that which is quite interesting so along with the OVS cinch strap that they provide it's just like a pretty stereotypical cam strap i have it attached to the overall overhaul hd uh bed bar the little bracket that's right there 
which is what I plan to do all along. But anyway, with uh, the cinch strap on it, I did get a little bit more coverage. All right, a little bit more space held right there. But you can see it's not making contact right there, but it's also not totally flush. And I was really hoping it was gonna be flush right up against the tent. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing something wrong or if that's just as far as it can go. I can still play with the distance. I haven't tightened down the actual backside of the L brackets quite yet. So I can still play with that distance if I want to, but I'm worried about pulling it too hard. I don't wanna, I don't wanna break, you know, the, uh, the hinge here. It seems pretty heavy duty, it seems good, but still. You never know. So yeah, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time with that. And it's not because it's making contact with the back of my tent, it is this piece of metal right here that is part of the whole 270 awning kind of hinge. It does not have any more space to travel. So, I don't know. I'm a little upset about it, if I'm being per perfectly honest. Of all places, the tailgate of the truck is where I'd love the coverage to be completely secured. I mean, otherwise, it does support itself. I did happen to put down the uh, support poles just to make sure that they were working well. They're really secured in there by this Velcro. It took me a hot minute to fish those out. The legs are real easy to use. They just twist into place. I had to use two hands for that. And then you just push it right up and it goes into the Velcro here. But it has one here on this side and then it has one here on the other side. So there's one at the furthest point in the back and then uh, there's one at the first, the first turn. So the other two in this sleeve can be supported by just putting into this hole here. And then on the last one, you put it into that hole there. Just in case it gets too windy or whatever, you want a little bit extra protection to keep it up. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's got these zippers around the outside to attach the additional accessories like the uh, awning walls that you can get at Overland Vehicle Systems. So we're gonna test this out for a while. Overland Vehicle Systems 270 LT awning. It's the awning that's just a little bit bigger than the LTE awning. Reaches a little bit further forward on the front of a mid-size truck like the Colorado. So yeah, I think it's gonna work out well. Instructions worked out well. It was. It was good for the uh, Yakima Overhaul HD. The hardware components were perfect to fit inside the HD bars. So aside from the gap, which I'm gonna get over, I'm liking this thing so far. All right, folks, well, that's gonna be it for this video. It ended up being a little bit longer than I initially expected, um, but comment down below and let me know what you think of that little gap issue I was having on the tailgate. Do you? Do you find it to be a big deal? Uh, are most awnings like this? Because after I've done some research um, over the past few days, I kind of realized a lot of awnings do that. So maybe I shouldn't be so surprised, but comment down below, let me know what you think. Um, I'm gonna test this one out. This will be the awning that will travel with us to Colorado in a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate the view. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the uh, product installation, if you want to see more of the Chevy Colorado or a little bit of this uh, brand new 4Runner we got. So thanks again. I'll see you next time. Peace.